Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to Edstrats. In this video I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing of this Arduino Uno package from, I don't know what you call it, Elegoo. Um, so yeah, they're very affordable guys, they're about third of the price of any Arduino kit or this official Arduino kit that I could find on the web and everybody's raving about it because they're saying the quality is pretty much the same and i do believe them because arduino is open source and anybody can make it and if they can make it well well there's no problem there in making it right and they seem to be trending on amazon because their kits are quite good my biggest worry is well first of all i have no clue well i do have a little bit of clue about what it is but I don't really have a good understanding about Arduino, so I didn't want to get a kit that has lots of electronics, great potential, and at the same time, no information on how to, how to assemble it, so I would be looking like an idiot and saying, what should I do with it? So let's see what is in this one, um, and does it include some sort of manuals, so it wouldn't be completely lost here. So there we go, I have all the components out of the box and it's quite a lot. Now, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is the actual software and manuals and all that. So this CD actually does contain everything you need. So it has a PDF um, documents in terms of 30, having 33 lessons in four different language, German, English, French, and I believe Spanish or Italian and um, also has libraries uh, which you will need to make some of the components work i won't go into detail there because i'm not um, expert at myself um, but it basically has everything for you to make all these components work um, one way or the other so you'll be able to go through all of them and check out um, well everything and learn everything hopefully so one one gripe I suppose is that um, it's nice to have 33 lessons, but it's not in the book. So somehow it's a little bit disappointing. But at the same time, I must say that um, you will be using this device in terms of um, programming and everything connected to the laptop or tablet or phone, however it is being programmed, but basically some sort of a computer. One thing to note is the manuals obviously come in the CD and quite a lot of computers and laptops these days do not have CDs but there's some sort of a QR code here and I presume what that will do is it will lead you to the site where you can download up-to-date information so that's fine and I, I didn't look into detail in terms of manuals and what's on the CD but I opened one of the PDFs English PDF and I saw that there's 33 lessons and I also seen that uh, it describes a little bit about um, electronics and components and what they do. So the basics are there and for the price I can't really fault it because usually a while back components like that would come in a, I don't know, box or whatever with no code, nothing at all and you'd have to figure everything out for yourselves. So having all these components and having some sort of help here is really helpful. Now another thing to mention is most of the components that are on the table here, they can be purchased separately. They're widely available on eBay. Like if you look for something like this, which is a proximity sensor, you would find hundreds of these on eBay from different sellers and you would find loads of libraries from different users that would have access to that component in terms of having it to work on Arduino. So you never have any problem with these components, even if there was no manual, but there is one. Now let's get up and personal, I suppose, with all components. I'll try to explain to you as much as I can uh, from what I've understood so far what they are. So to start with, I'll show you this box of components, which to be honest with you, I'm not really sure what they all are. These are obviously LEDs. Um, I think these are resistors, maybe variable resistors because there's some sort of adjustment knobs here. And these are capacitors. These are obviously buttons. Um, that's pretty obvious. Um, some speakers, I think there are, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Not sure about these, they look like MOSFETs, um, something like that. I'll show you from the other side just in case that's more visible. So yeah, they're all in this nice little box. Now you also have different type of motors. So you have a micro server motor, which looks like so. And it also includes actually little blades, which are here. So there you go, that's included. Another type of motor would be a standard motor. So that just pins um, 
depending on the power you provide it with at certain speed. You see there's just two connectors, so that's just for power. And then there's another motor which is similar to the first that I showed you, which is a, a stepper motor. And what that does, exactly like the other one, is it can turn a certain amount of degrees at a certain speed, a certain direction. So if you, if you will, imagine like a robotic arm, so it needs to, for instance, go down a bit, then up a bit, then down a bit, then turn clockwise, counterclockwise or whatever. So this is what it's used for, it's for fine control. Um, also there's more sophisticated motors, I think they're called NEMA or something like that. And they can do all sorts of things, but I'm not really that advanced to know how they are working on how they're programmed. But there's plenty of YouTube videos about that if you want to have a look at that. Um, all the components, by the way, by the way has all these um, pins that you can use for the breadboard. So for instance, there's a mini breadboard looks like so and these components well obviously this one cannot fit in fit right in you'd need to use the cables provided but see all of them they use solderless pins so basically you can connect the components without using soldering iron this apparently comes off so let's take this off so this is some sort of a temperature or thermal sensor and that's just a movement sensor like you would normally have um, in most offices and some houses and whatnot pretty outdated stuff but it's still there and this is just a controller for the stepper motor if I'm not mistaken looks like so so there's some LEDs which does I don't know what just a PCB on the back then you have temperature and humidity sensor looks like so you also have a thumb pad is that what it's called so it's basically like a joystick thing and with a push functionality so just like your Xbox or PlayStation or whatever other controllers that are out there on the market and once again, pins provided so you can connect it. Um, this one, if I'm not mistaken, is a timer. So basically you can set it for like a, this is like a calendar timer actually, if I'm not mistaken, it's it has years, months, um, days, days of the week, um, has a leap calendar function integrated, obviously clocks, so hours, minutes, and it has its own battery. So. Basically, when your device is switched off, like Arduino, it still goes on ticking. And I think that battery provides it uh, power for about up to a year, if I'm not mistaken. So in case your project needs some sort of a timer that's always there, you can use this device. This one, I'm not sure. I think it's um, some sort of a, like a microphone or something like that. But I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. So if you want, you can leave a comment at the comment section down below. Let me know what that is. That's a relay. Um, what relay does basically in a nutshell is, yeah, I think it is a relay. Um, it allows you to switch a power from um, a high voltage power from the lower voltage device. So I'll explain that to you in a second. So this is 10, 10 amp 30 volt or 10 amp to 50 volt. Um, and what it does, well, there's AC, DC and all that um, engraved there as well. So what it does is, for instance, you have 12 volt power connected through a relay. And what you want to do is you want to switch it on and off using something like a five volt battery or, or Arduino in this case. So you can connect one of the Arduino pins to send a signal to one of the pins of the relay to say switch it on or switch it off. And that will control the, the relay. In essence, you don't need to connect something like an Arduino to a powerful um, source and burn it in order to control the electronics. You can safely control it using one of these things. That's what it's for. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know. This is an infrared receiver because as you'll see in a minute, there's also a remote that sends an infrared signal and this obviously receives it. So it's just like a little um, photo sensor, I suppose. Not 100% sure what it is. Maybe it's some sort of potentiometer or something, but it just twists around. So yeah, not 100% sure. Maybe that's to control your server motion, whatnot. This device here, um, at least from the description, oh, on the back it says here, water sensor, duh. Um, I don't know how it works, but there you go. That's a water sensor and this device is pretty neat that's pretty cool guys what it does is so say if you put it on the plane um 
level like this well for me it's plain i know in the camera is a bit different it senses the tilt each direction and it also senses movement acceleration each direction so it's basically accelerometer and i'm not sure what's the name for the other one uh, but yeah it senses acceleration and it senses the tilt so basically it senses position in space using this device so cool for robotics but you can also use it for your car for your motorbike or something like that then we have here which is just a power supply so usb power on off i presume and then it connects to arduino so it's just like a separate thing i think what it might do is if you have a bit a higher dc power because there's some sort of fine controls there if you have a bit higher dc power that arduino should be accepting i think this might do the trick by kind of shielding it or converting it not 100 percent sure once again there's some sort of led board basically so you can control how each of these leds switch on there's just a sticker on the top it seems i'm just gonna peel it off I hope that's just for protection otherwise i just ruined it so there you go then you can make some sort of a mini image using these pixels by the way that's what pixel would normally look on the screen this is just a magnified version so pixel is basically individual component for the light and once again the connector there um next just the remote and batteries included so that's pretty neat and as you see functions here looks like some sort of a radio control or something like that so maybe you can make an mp3 player out of it i don't know i doubt but who knows then you have a uh, this thing here which is just a numeric display with quite a few components uh, sorry connections there so that will be fun and then you have another little display just for one digit in this case what else this is neat as well um this is a proximity sensor so as the name suggests it basically senses proximity i think the range is something like a couple of meters to 10 or 30 centimeters which is actually enough um, to put it in your vehicle for reverse and all that mind you it's not waterproof so probably not perfect for all scenarios there's a little blade fan here for um, a motor um, there's a ribbon connector here so they're all connected you obviously can separate them if you want but I'd probably keep them because there's one of the components here. I'm not even sure. What, oh, I think this display. Yeah. So this display, for instance, pretty cool little thing. So LCD display um, to show whatever information. I don't know how many lines and what is the resolution and whatnot, but there it is. And it has a lot of connections here. So probably be handy to use something like a ribbon that I showed you a second ago to connect it then we have a numpad just like digits a b c d all that has a little bit of a click like one of these uh, thin calculators and once again ribbon connector so you just can connect two pins straight away we have a couple breadboards little tiny one here this one doesn't connect to anything so it's basically on its own solitary board if you want to call it that way and then you have a much bigger much larger breadboard and i think it's actually quite a good quality because what i could sense from the internet anyway is cheaper boards and not as good quality bars would have all these markings kind of a bit blurred out this one seems to be okay but it also has connectors on each side so you have multiple of these boards from this manufacturer you can actually connect them um, in parallel these are your resistors and actually it's handy because see it says 10 ohm sorry what is that 10k 100k um 20 or 220 not so sure but they they kind of marked and there's colors on them that you can guess um what they are and i think these blue ones are quite a decent quality so there you go at least what from what i've read on the interwebs this is another pretty cool thing so this is to program your tags that you would use. Um, in my case, for instance, I have a tag like that for the bins and have a tag like that for my work. So you can program that, so that'd be pretty cool to play around with. Just obviously be careful because you're not supposed to clone the devices, but basically it reads and programs as far as I can tell. 
pretty cool. Radio frequency ID. Um, nine volt battery is included. So once again, in terms of complete package, there's everything there which you need. USB cable is included. And uh, by the way, guys, for those of you who don't have a USB cable or want a separate cable or something like that, this is a standard um, printer cable, what I would call, because that's what they were used for most of the time. And there's loads of these on eBay. And you can probably find it in, in your office that they're not used all that often because most of the printers are networked now. Then you have a bunch of cables here. So some of them I think are a little bit longer, yeah. And most of them are short. There's a bunch of them here. Should be enough for all your projects. And remember, it's a solder-free or solder-less, I suppose, kit. So you don't need to solder anything. So once you finish with one project, you remove all these wires and you reuse it for another project. This is your nine volt battery connector um, for Arduino. And then also included, you have this thing. Now, I don't know in terms of quality, is it good, bad, ugly, or whatever, but it is included and you can use it as well. It has a little LED for power and once again, connector. So what's that? Um, nine volt, one amp, which is exactly what's required for Arduino itself. So all these things are included in this kit. And I think that's pretty cool to have everything um, like that in the kit, including obviously the Arduino itself that can control all these devices in terms of it's basically programmable board. So as far as I understand it, you have power pins, analog pins, digital pins, as it's written here. And you can use these pins to connect devices like LED, motors, whatever, relays. And you can control them using this little board. And this little board basically can say, okay, send pin one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four on this side, such and such signal. So the device is controlled. And some of the pins are PWM, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, digital PWM. So it's pulse with modulation, modulation, sorry. So basically send small pulses to simulate kind of a increase and decrease in power. So that's pretty cool. Um, and everything is included. So guys, if you are wondering about Arduino and you want to get started, but you don't really want to spend a lot of money in the beginning and you're wondering what's this thing, Elegoo Uno R3 compared to Arduino Uno, which is widely available as well, and which is many times more expensive. Go with something like this. Have a look at all these components um, that you will get with it. Play with them, destroy a couple of them, replace a couple of them, get more. And once you actually know what you're doing and what you need, you might go for a better quality board or just support the community and buy Arduino Uno. Um, give the founders a little bit of money, I suppose, to keep the project going. But to start with, something like that is pretty cool. And also, if I'm not mistaken, Arduino Uno doesn't have these markings on the sides and this one does, which makes your products, your projects a little bit easier. I actually bought, ordered a couple of more of these boards because they are so cheap. I think I bought more, two more of them for something like um, 15 euro. Not each, both of them for 15 euro. And I got some Arduino Nano, which is basically kind of the same thing, but the size of it would be twice the size of this black long piece here. And it's pretty thin as well. So you can put it in your car, motorbike or whatever, and just make this integrated project a little bit better and uh, way a bit easier. So yeah guys, thanks for watching and um, if you liked the video, click the like button and subscribe for more videos to come. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any more Arduino videos unless I'm going to come up with something cool. I'm going to become a bit more sophisticated in the whole electronics and that's going to take a while. So don't count on me on that. But I just wanted to share with you this little thing that I got my hands on. Really inexpensive, um, really cool little device and a lot of components to get your hobby started. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Have a nice day.